to uh, to to be a part of that tonight. Looks like Darius Rucker's in the house. You've got Brandon Streeter there. Uh, all the Clemson family to be a part of this with the the first ever number one pick for Clemson. I mean, just just a special moment, you know. First of all, uh, just so thankful uh, for you know uh, having the blessing of, of coaching Trevor for a few years, but you know we we. We tried to just kind of help do our part while we had him here, but, but let me tell you, uh, his family, all the people uh, that poured into him uh, growing up, uh, Coach King there at Cartersville High, uh, you know, he showed up here a great young man and uh, just thankful that we had an opportunity to spend the last three years together. And, you know, we knew this was a possibility, but, you know, it, it, it comes down to, putting the work in day in and day out. And it's just been a, a joy to watch him do just that. I mean, this guy is incredibly disciplined and committed and uh, just super cool moment to to be a part of this and, and a great moment for Clemson uh, as well. You know, there's been a lot of things that have happened at Clemson over the years, but this is one of them that uh, has never happened. And uh, so, you know, he's leaving here as the winningest quarterback. Uh, led us to a 15 and 0 season, and now the first number one pick in the history of our school. It's a it's a great moment for for everyone. Uh, next, we'll go to Cassidy Hill with Sports Illustrated. Hi, Coach. Um, Hi. I'm wondering if you can tell Jaguar fans if there's one play, like Jaguar fans that might not have seen much of Trevor play so far. Is there one play or one game where you can point back to and say, this is the epitome of Trevor Lawrence? Well, I think a couple of things to, to specifically to the Jaguar uh, fan base is, first of all, you go back to his freshman year, true freshman, uh, that national championship game. And if you go back just two years ago, just a little over two years ago, you know, Alabama was 14 and 0. We were 14 and 0. Uh, they had a veteran quarterback and we had this true freshman and the narrative was, you know, how's this, this guy going to handle this type of spotlight? And he was unbelievable, you know, and we win that game. So, so I think that, that bodes well for what's coming next uh, for the Jaguar fan base, as far as his ability to handle the stage, uh, to make the transition, to compete against the best of the best. Um, but I think also uh, last year in, in the Ohio State game uh, out in, in uh, Arizona, uh, you know, he gets knocked out of the game of play and he comes back. And I mean, literally just, you know, just a couple moments later, he rips off about a 50, 60 yard run. And so you saw his toughness and his competitiveness. Uh, and then the last thing is he's a winner. You know, as I said earlier, he's the winningest quarterback in the history of this school. I think he lost two games in high school and two in his college career. Uh, so he's just a winner, and, and he's the same guy day in and day out. But that's a couple of uh, moments that I think uh, can excite the, the, the Jaguar fan base. Thanks, Cassidy. We'll go to Andy Staples with The Athletic. Hey, Dabo, I I'm wondering – Trevor's freshman year, when, when you made him the starter, what did you learn about him during that few weeks period where there was a whole lot going on with your team and, and you know, he winds up leading you to a national title? Yeah, well, you know, we we're fortunate that we had him in the spring, so we had a chance to, to uh, you know, learn a little bit about him prior to, obviously, him showing up in the summer. And, and uh, you know, but out there at Texas A&M, his, his, his first pass, uh, you know, actually the spring game, his first play in the spring game in front of 50,000 or whatever uh, was unbelievable. And then, and then the Texas A&M game, you know, on the road. The it's, yeah, it's an incredible, incredible uh, environment. And he throws that ball, the conversion route to T. Higgins, uh, which T., T takes on and scores, you know, just, just – and then Georgia Tech, you know, so just you know, watching him and seeing how he handles things. And then the Georgia Tech game, he went to the left. He went out to the left, and I believe it was to Renfro. He throws an absolute laser moving to his left in, in, in a hole about that big. So his confidence, you know, you just 
we just knew. And, uh, you know, I knew that we were going to have a chance to be 15-0 and 0 and have a chance to, to win a national championship that year. You know, he was, he was, the, he was the best player. And, uh, you know, those, those are tough, tough decisions uh, along the way. But uh, – and then you make that change, and there's obviously a lot of emotion and a lot of things involved with that. Uh, but to just see how he took it all in stride and to see how his teammates rallied around him because they knew. And, uh, and then just to watch him, you know, be himself and prepare week in and week out and the lights got brighter and brighter and brighter all the way to, you know, you go back and look at that Alabama team from 2018. <laughs> that, was a, that was an unbelievable team, but he just never flinched. And uh, that's what I love about it. You know, he's, he's incredibly – uh, humble, but he's but he's incredibly confident. And that comes from you know the, the work ethic. So uh, you know it was it was awesome to see him perform, and and then uh, especially to know that hey, he was going to be around for a couple more years. I knew we were going to have a chance to to win a few more games, uh, and uh, just a just a just a joy to be with day in and day out. Thanks, Sandy. We'll go to Mike Duraco with ESPN.com. Coach, what, uh, what did you say to Urban Meyer uh, in terms of, you know, how you're describing Trevor? I mean, everybody's asking you what Trevor's like, but when Urban asked you, what do you say to him? Or what did you say? Well, I mean, we talked about a lot of things. Uh, we, we talked on the phone. We talked in person. Uh, talked tonight before the draft. And, uh, you know, I, I, first thing I told him is don't screw it up. <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, don't screw it up. I mean, this guy is, this is, this guy is, this will be uh, a very easy transition. You know, he's well prepared. Uh, what he's stepping into and, and the expectations and, and all those things, you know, that's his normal. You know, that, that's his normal. And it has been for a long time. Uh, he's built the right way. He's grounded in his faith. He's got a wonderful family. He's, he's married to his middle school sweetheart. Uh, you know, this guy has been consistent. He is the epitome of consistency. And if you know anything about Urban Meyer, that's something that he values is consistency and then toughness. And uh, I didn't have to sell him on his toughness. He saw that up close and personal. So I think the biggest thing that we talked about was just, you know, some of the uh, intangibles that I had a chance to see over the past three years. And, uh, you know, his love of the game, his love of preparation, and uh, his ability to lead and how he just makes everyone else better, just has such a, uh, a great feel for the game, uh, his instincts and all those things. So I talked about a lot of things, but that's just a few. Thank you. We'll wrap up with Mia O'Brien. Hey, Coach, I'm just curious as far as the personnel here in Jacksonville, um, you know, just taking a look at what they have, maybe what they need to add as someone who has coached Trevor and schemed around him. What does this team need to bring to the table to make him successful here in Jacksonville? Well, uh, everything starts with that offensive line when, when it comes to quarterback play. That's first and foremost, you know, uh, and I don't know enough about their roster or the personnel that they have. But, uh, you know, you, you best believe Urban Meyer. Uh, is to, you know, you got two great winners. Urban Meyer's a great winner, and Trevor Lawrence is a great winner. And, you know, I, I think that's going to lead to, uh, you know, great things. They'll make good decisions, but obviously you got to have playmakers, uh, and you, but it starts with that offensive line, you know. But, but this is a team game. Teams win championships, and, and, come, and you have to do it together. Trevor, Trevor's going to do his part, but he can't do all of it. You know, you got to have good defense. You got to have, you know, uh, weapons offensively. and. And then you got to have the style of play and scheme and, and coaches and all that. And I think all of those ingredients are there in Jacksonville, especially with what they're going to be able to do in the free agent market. And then through this draft, I think they're going to put a couple more pieces together. Uh, but I, I, I love the coaching staff that Urban has put together. Uh, I think it's a great fit uh, from top to bottom. And uh, Trevor's one of those guys that can play in any scheme and really could play in any era of football. And uh, so it'll be fun to, to watch it all come together and, and see who they surround him with. But, uh, you know, first and foremost is, is uh, you know, making sure that 
they got everything solidified up front.